Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We're in the Palo Alto offices today for a CUBE conversation as part of our ongoing Women in Tech feature. We're really excited to have Randy Barshak, the CMO of X Matters in the office. Welcome, Randy. Hi, thanks for having me. Pleasure. So in doing a little research uh, for this segment, looked you up online. You've been, a, uh, been around for a while, seen a lot of changes in the valley, I think. Uh, We've, as a term we've heard before is a, a woman of the valley. Um, a woman of you the, certainly, I don't know you how that sounds. No, that's a good thing. No, <laughs> Better I mean, than e women of the night. Exactly, <laughs> even all the way back to organic, which, which to me is, is, a, is a special company, is kind of a symbol of, of that time, of mm -hmm. when things were just booming back in like 96, 97. People were dropping out of school to go start companies. VCs were throwing money around like crazy, and it was really the boom. So here we are now. So talk a little bit about kind of your perspective as you've seen this thing morph for the last, God, like 20 years now. It's a little bit everything old is new again. <laughs> that's, <right>? that's true. <laughs> it's, uh, I think people are still dropping out of school uh, to start companies, maybe even more so now, and they're getting paid to, to do it. Um, but it's, um, it, you know, some of, some of what we're seeing now is very similar to what I think we saw back in 1999, 98, the, the, the first boom, or the first, maybe right. now we're in the second and a half-ish, boom 2.0. Right, boom 2.0. Boom 2.0. Boom um, but it's, uh, you know, my perspective has changed because I've got several years under my belt now that I, I didn't have there. So with that, I think, comes some cynicism for some of the... The unicorns and rainbows That's right. might not last. We didn't have unicorns the last round. Last I don't remember forever. the That's unicorns. That's true. It was all just rainbows. <laughs> um, but also, um, having seen it through, you know, I think as as a, an executive in a company right now, you you um, understand what's important and what's not important and what's more sustainable. So it's it's I I think it's more fun this time round. Right. Uh, having some experience under my belt. And yeah being a little bit more realis realistic about things. And it seems too that this boom is really more enterprise boomy, right? Yeah. It's all about, it, to me it almost, it reminds me of kind of the early ERP days, really this kind of transformational unlocking of value at an enterprise yeah. level where little tiny changes, 1% improvement, half a percent improvement on a really big number really delivers a, yeah. a significant number. But let's back up again, I apologize. Why don't you give us a, a quick rundown on, on X Matters? Sure. So X Matters um, is a company that plugs uh, intelligent communications into any business process. And we started in the IT market where you would have a uh, server going down at two o'clock in the morning, 500 people working in your IT department, and you really need to find the one or two or handful of people that you need versus sending emails out to all 200 people um, and nobody responds. Everybody responds or no one responds when, when you have that scenario. So we really apply the intelligence both in terms of finding the person with certain skill sets that's available, um, that's responding, along with the business process of based on what's happening, um, what do I do if they respond or if they don't in a certain way. So it's the business process, the intelligence, and the communications all together. Okay. And now with cloud communications growing so much, um, and you no longer be needing to be dependent on a physical phone or a physical phone line, we're seeing uses in any imaginable business scenario. It could be, I need 10 extra nurses to work this weekend, so I send, um, something, I send something out. With the Internet of Things, we're seeing a lot of devices now that can talk to us. They tell us they need help, but they, they need to find a human, right? right so right. we find that human who's closest with that skill set that finds them and, and um, get them to respond as quickly as possible. So that's interesting. So you said, we talked a little bit uh, before we came on air, that X Matters has been around a lot, but really there's some transformational stuff that's yeah. changed recently. How much of that is cloud-based? Talk about really the impact of the cloud, because obviously we go to a lot of shows and you know, cloud, big data, mobile, social are the big recurring themes over mm -hmm. and over and over. Absolutely. You know, what's the impact of cloud to X Matters business and is, and is there uh, a big data play in there as well? Yeah, um, they're, both are relevant. The cloud's been huge, tremendous for us from, from two perspectives. One is um, our platform now is cloud. Uh, before we were an on-premise solution and now we're primarily in the cloud. And um, that's enabled us to grow, onboard customers much more rapidly, give them a lot of flexibility, gives us more insight into what's happening so that we can help clients uh, more rapidly and they can scale instantaneously. Cloud is a wonderful, <laughs> good thing. 
Um, the other thing that's really changing in terms of the cloud is cloud communications means we're, we're getting rid of all those desk phones and fax lines and physical constraints of communications. And with it all in the cloud, um, it gives us the ability to be much more, f infinitely more flexible in our right. communications. And cloud communications is probably one of the fastest growing segments. It's growing about 150% year on year versus traditional communications, which are stagnant, if not declining. And what do, you, what do you define as traditional? Because even phones have been kind of voice over IP for a long time, so is that considered cloud or that was just kind of digitization of old analog? Where do you kind of draw the lines? I'm not sure where the lines are drawn. In okay. the, um, I'd say voice over IP is probably somewhere right there okay. in, the, in the middle of things. Um, but I'm talking about you know traditional telcos selling you landlines. Okay. And if you want to make 500 calls, you need 500 Yikes. phone numbers, right? Um, I think somewhere I still own a phone line in Japan. You used to have to pay five hundred dollars to own a phone. So <laughs> well, I hope there's a shrine there to a pager somewhere yeah. in the office, right? Uh, the uh, the original, the yeah, original. We've got, some, we've got some old equipment. You got some old equipment. Around. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. And then what's your, what's the big data play? I mean, how how is big data and, and the, again the change of technology over the last couple of years enabled you guys to deliver better um, better so service? Big data is a really interesting play because. Um, Big data is all about getting to the answer more rapidly right, and crunching right. all of this information. But at the end of the day, I like to say, if big data falls in the forest but nobody hears it, did it really ever compute, right? I'm not sure if that works or not. <laughs> but, um, and it's, it's really about, you know, I, uh, you've, you're crunching all these numbers and you can predict that you're about to, there's about to be a security breach or something's changing in your business. Right. And if you've got to wait for an email to be sent Monday morning, it's almost useless that you went through that entire process right. to begin with. And we're really about that last mile, about making sure once something's been detected, you're engaging the person or people that need to be as rapidly as possible. So it's created tremendous opportunity for us because suddenly big data is creating all of these insights, but you need to deliver that information to the right, right person right. to take action. Right. So be actionable insights. So Act are, are, you, are you finding it's easier to kind of get ahead of the curve? Because we always talk about two kind of predictive versus prescriptive. You know, how, how is that journey going for, for your company? Are you getting from, from kind of a predictive to prescriptive in some of these actions and some of these systems? I think people are still, uh, quite honestly, working on the predictive okay. part. Uh, the space that we came from used to be about resolution. It really focused on resolution. Something's broken or something's wrong and how quickly can you get things back up and right. running? So getting the to the predictive is, um, is a next step for, I think, many IT shops. I think um, we, we talk about it a lot right, um, right. and people still go to shows quite, so right quite, quite get excited about the future. On there. <laughs> it's always interesting to see, you know, you read the white paper from, right. from Gartner and you're like, yes, this is exactly what we're talking about. Then you realize no one's ever actually quite there yet, right? <laughs> so I think people are really, honestly, I think people are still working on predictive. Um, and obviously we, to be able to prevent something happening is um, much better than to be able to restore it rapidly, right. right? So that's sort of the next step of where we're seeing our clients, right. our clients going. We always talk about real time being real time means, you know, in time to do something about it. You know, that's, that's as real time as you need. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing that comes up, and I'm interested to get your take, is on the cloud is the security piece. You know, early days, obviously, that was one of the biggest criticisms of, of uh, certainly public clouds. Uh, is the security. What are you finding in terms of your customers' comfort level with cloud uh, in terms of security? That's a, that's a good question. I'm not, I don't want to uh, claim to be a security expert. Uh, we're, we see the full range, right? I mean, we see, we see shops that are cloud only, all cloud, you know, everything's cloud and no concerns. And then we'll see more conservative clients that are coming from regulated industries that might have uh, more concerns, but once you actually go through um, the uh, our particular infrastructure and 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 any concerns, we don't see any issues right. with um, with addressing them. I personally don't think you know the cloud, uh, whether it's cloud or on premise. It's you're often uh, with shadow IT these days. That you've got cloud in there anyway. So I, I think um, embracing it right. is a better strategy than denying it. Right. Um, right. Well, and the other the other evidence would be, you know, how much of your marketing material collateral effort is focused on um, allaying the fears of security in the cloud, and it sounds like not very much. 
we have we have them you know in the drawer for when it comes up right um, but it it's I think in today's world a lot of that is a given but we um, we often again for larger companies um, security is a big issue and so we will you know we do have right. marketing materials but it's not first and first and foremost you know we're safe and then right <laughs> right no I think, I, I think it's a good thing yeah. I mean I think in a lot of ways probably public cloud is, is safer and better yeah. security than private cloud because that's their job and that you don't have kind of rogue employees right. running around necessarily Absolutely. that are pissed off that something bad happened. So then let's kind of look to the future and you even got it on the website, which is the internet of things and, and using these types of processes that used to be kind of break, fix, go go uh, page somebody to do this into new applications, new business process, and then ultimately the internet mm -hmm. of things. I love the internet of things. I'm a big fan of it. Um, uh, connected refrigerators and, and everything. So the internet of things, again, if, if you look at our history at X Matters, it used to be a server or a network could tell you that it's having a problem. Those are the machines that could talk to you. Those were the things. Now, yesterday's now with, machines. With yes, well, they're still yesterday's around. Things, there's, there's there's yesterday's things. Yesterday's things. Now everything's a thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Even uh, my, my husband's in... Um, the medical field, and he had a pacemaker that sample yesterday, and and he said it's Wi-Fi enabled. You know, so everything can tell you uh, what its status is. Um, but again, the 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 that last part is, but you need to engage someone. You know, it's it's actionable, but people are they really actually taking action? Taking right. Action. And in order to take action, you need to get someone engaged. So right. um, for for us, it's really exciting because we see sensors and monitors everywhere, they'll be everywhere, and um, they can give us really valuable information. But at the end of the day, you still, until robots have completely taken over the world, and I think we're not quite, maybe that'll be uh, tech, I don't know, they're sending this, They're sending the software download to the Tesla cars, yeah. they'll be driving themselves <laughs> next week, I think. Mean. <laughs> maybe let me tech them for point out. You've already aged me, so I, I don't know that I'll be around I'm, for I'm that. <laughs> but, um, you know, at the end of the day, if, if something, if there's an anomaly, right, if something goes wrong, you need to engage a human. So the more we automate, right. the more you're screwed when things go wrong. Right. Because right. you really can't leave the building. Somebody's got to be there to take care of things. So the, uh, and that's where we come in. The pager metaphor will never go away, even it though. It probably won't go away. <laughs> so let's talk, let's shift gears, talk a little bit about your journey. Um, and, you know, again, looking at your LinkedIn profile and doing a little research, you went to Dartmouth and you studied Asian studies and film yes, production. Yes, awesome. no, very so obvious path. Not, 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 the, uh, not the obvious <laughs> STEM that, that's getting so much talk about today. So how, how did you get here uh, for, for, again, for, for people that are, you know, kind of figuring out what they're going to do and, and potentially trying to get a, a career in technology? Um, talk about how you got here from there. Yeah, and I think we were talking about this a little bit before. I mean, first and foremost, I followed my heart. You know, I always did what felt right uh, versus something that felt necessarily calculated. So it right. was always the, it, the next step um, rather than plotting some master plan out from an early age. So I was passionate about international, particularly Asian relations and film in school. And I was a filmmaker in Japan for the first six years of, of my career. What kind um, of films did you make? Mostly documentary, but uh, I did spend a year creating propaganda films for the Japanese government. Propaganda so, films, um, right. I'm a propaganda filmmaker. <laughs> um, and um, first and foremost, I think of myself as a storyteller, um, which is, uh, parlays amazingly well into tech, because um, particularly as a marketer in tech, you're really bridging the gap between two cultures, people that understand the tech and the, the consumers, whether they're business consumers or, or consumer consumers, right. um, they need to understand what, it, what, what this technology does and how it's going to change your life. So um, I, I went from uh, media into multimedia, which was slightly more technical. Um, and then uh, when I came to Silicon Valley in 1999, um, hooked up with a, a group of engineers um, that were in working out of SAP at the time about to spin off a company. They couldn't tell their story. Nobody, nobody, everybody understood they were brilliant, but no one could really understand what they were doing and what right. the value was. Right. And um, it was like all the pieces fell into place for me. I was not interested in ERP or enterprise. I wanted uh, to work in internet advertising and something a little bit, what felt to me at the time, a little bit more sexy. Right. But I realized as a storyteller um, that uh, being able to bridge that gap was even a bigger challenge than cultural gaps between two countries. And kind of been doing it ever since. I think the best marketers are storytellers. That's interesting. So I'd love to get your position because I, 
I agree, and and, uh, and I think a lot of times people get away from the story, the story of the customer, the, the way the customer, what are they doing that they need your product or service? How are they gonna use their product or service? How's it gonna change their world? To now, it's, it, with a lot of companies, the very successful companies, it's really an engineering-based culture. It's just like, we're gonna just keep rolling out. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna keep rolling out new features. We're gonna keep rolling out new products. Hopefully they work. If they don't, that's fine. We'll do a fast fail. We'll roll out some different. And it seems like kind of the emphasis on the storytelling has fallen a little bit. I guess on the other hand though, when you talk about Kanban and a lot of the, the new algebra methodologies, they do start with stories. Mm -hmm. So what's been your kind of reception leading with, I'm a storyteller and we, you know, do you do that in terms of your product development meetings, your sales meetings? You know, what is the story of the experience of this product or service? It, um, I think it, it always, I, I don't think the art of storytelling is, is ever lost. And I think good salespeople, good marketers, whether they realize it or not, are good storytellers. Um, the best calls we have are when we can, uh, people talk about case studies and references, it's really stories, right? I want right. to know if I, if I engage with you and if I use that, this technology, what's my life going to look like before and after? Um, so sometimes that's done better. Uh, in, in better ways than other, you you know you you don't quite build campfires in somebody's <laughs> right, conference right, right. room <laughs> and, and well, dim the lights. Um, Bring out the marshmallows. But the excited. the uh, by far the you know the 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 feature and even even when in, you're looking at something like features and and functionality of a product, if you can't relate that to the story of with this you can do this and right. this is how your life is going to change and without this you can't do that. Um, it's um, I think you're not going to be effective um, in the the sales process. So I can't. I, I'm a big fan of storytelling as a marketing tool and as a sales tool. I'm actually. Uh, we've got a, a company meeting coming up in a few weeks, and it's going to be all around storytelling and how to tell the stories of of what our clients are doing. Excellent. All right. So we're almost out of time, but I give you the last word. And what we what we often do at the end of these segments is is really give you an opportunity to talk directly to. Again, usually it's uh, we think of. Young, young women, maybe early in their careers, or they're in college, mm -hmm. or their families, and you know, there's a lot of talk about women in tech right now. It's a very hot topic in the news and, and STEM. You know, what advice would you give, kind of looking back on your career, um, to some of these people just getting started in their, in their career? That's a good, uh, a good question. And I know you said um, you what, do some what, stuff with Dartmouth and you're involved. Like, yeah, we had, I had um, Dartmouth Entrepreneurial Network um, has an intern program, and I had a group of interns here um, that were working on a project for me over the fall. And that was, that was fun. You kind of get to relive your <coughs> youth and also realize that I was not anywhere near that ambitious nor smart <laughs> when I was back in college. So. I don't know. Documentary <laughs> filmmaker in Japan is pretty good. <laughs> um, you know, again, like I said, first, first and foremost, you know, do what you're going to be passionate about. I, I sometimes will see younger people that are all about the success and success is not guaranteed anywhere you go so make sure you like what you're doing and and you you go to work every day and you're happy about what you're doing because you can put a lot of time into something you're not passionate about and um, you might not see that return um, so again this I, I i've been fortunate enough to see some success by following my heart and that's um, maybe not the most practical advice to give but but we've seen the ups and downs, right? right so right. the, the options might be roll. worth something or they might not. And if you kind of look back on five years and realize, God, I was miserable and I got nothing out of it, it's going to be worse than, uh, you know, I loved that job, yeah. even though it might not have been uh, the most fruitful. Um, and as for, for females out there, you know, you hear a lot about women in tech, should you, should you, shouldn't you, um, do what you want. If this is what you want to do, you know, th this is your world too. So right. I, I would absolutely not discourage uh, women in tech, we see the value. Um, sometimes it's the softer skills, like storytelling. There are also some amazing, some of the best engineers I know are, are women. So, um, you know, it's a free, open world. Right, right. <laughs> or at least it was last time I checked. Um, and I, you know, it's a great, I, I love this industry. It's always changing. If you want stability, though, be a doctor. <laughs> Stay away. Because <laughs> you do wake up and there's some new technology and everything's changed. But right. if you love challenging yourself, I mean, I, technology will continue to change all the time. That's what I love. Every year, you everything's sort of being reinvented and no. you've got to keep your mind fresh. And um, it's a great, it's a, it's a great industry. Randy, it's a, it's a great message. And, and I think what's really neat about your story is that, you know, you, you weren't a computer scientist. You, you know, you've brought your passion for storytelling and applied it to technology across a variety of companies in big data and hardware and software. 
uh, now in IT services. So I think it's a terrific message. And, and, and really, like I said, follow your passion. We all have drawers full of, um, of options that are not worth the drawers <laughs> that are holding them. So if you're not liking what you're doing and it doesn't build off itself, you know, that's, that's a problem. So Randy mm -hmm. Barshak, thanks for stopping by. Thanks CMO for of X Matters. Uh, really a pleasure. Jeff Frick here at the Cube offices in Palo Alto, California. You've been watching Cube Conversations. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.